When is a boy not a boy? When he becomes a man. Just the other day, in a suburb of Dublin, not far from a secondary school, high school, an incident took place. A fracas, a fight, a bus stop, a melee between various members of school, I assume, or schools. But what was interesting about this melee was there appeared to be one individual who, according to the video evidence, and I have seen it, not only appeared to be rather much older looking than the other students and of foreign appearance, but that's not the most interesting part. He actually brandished a weapon in the course of the melee. Now, some people initially thought it was a knife. It was later discovered to be a chisel. Well, as soon as this footage and these pictures started circulating on social media, as you can imagine, there was a frenzy of activity. There was a frenzy of commentary. People were asking, who is this person? What age is this person? What's the status of this person? And how or why are they brandishing a knife, chisel, in a dangerous and menacing manner towards other boys in the scene. Having watched the video footage myself, I can't show it here because YouTube will just use it as an excuse to just take the video down. But a girl can quite clearly be heard in the background uh, crying in distress uh, and saying that he has a knife. <laughs> So she was literally a few feet away from the incident. She thought it was a knife. Now here's the picture you can see here. Supposedly he's a sixth year student. That's what they're saying. You can make your own mind up as to what age range you think this person might be. I know I have. But he's quite clearly brandishing, as you can see here, in a menacing fashion, a dangerous, deadly weapon. Be it a chisel, be it a knife, be it a nice pick, it doesn't matter. This is a lethal, dangerous weapon. And also you can see from the picture here, he seems, at least to me, possibly to you, to have the general appearance of a, a man of Middle Eastern ethnicity. Now, not knowing the person. Personally, I can't say with any degree of certainty that this is the case, but that's certainly how it looks. And as to his age, and bear in mind that high school, secondary school uh, children here go up to the age of 17, possibly 18, around 16, 17, 18. That's usually when they finish and head off to college. So, Again, to my eyes, and I can't say with any certainty, but on the face of it, he looks way older than that. So all the usual suspects were out of the trap saying, nothing to see here, it's all far-right conspiracy, even though we have the pictures like this, and we have the video evidence, which again, you can find for yourself. No, they just wanted it to go away didn't want anybody to talk about it and anybody who did talk about it was a far-right conspiracy theorist. But I and many many other people have real questions about this and questions that we want answered. Firstly, who is this person? Secondly, what is the status of this person? What is the age of this person? Have they come to the uh, country by various means? Are they new to the parish shall we say? And if that's the case, was their age verified? There have been cases and concerns in amongst the officialdom of migrants coming to Ireland and indeed the UK posing as children, saying they're children, whilst looking way older than that. And because nobody in officialdom seems to doubt them or seems to be able to disprove them, they then get put in alongside actual children in secondary schools, boys and girls, these people might be in their 30s. It's a horrendous situation. It's a dangerous situation. And because everybody knows that is happening, when something like this blows up, everybody seems to pay attention. 
for all the wrong reasons. And questions start to get asked. Questions that the powers that be don't want asked. Why was he carrying a deadly weapon on his person that you can see him brandishing here? Be it a chisel, a knife, a noise pick, it doesn't matter. That is a deadly weapon. That's a, if it's a chisel, it's a very stabby, stabby looking chisel. I've handled plenty of chisels in my time. I never went around the streets packing one in my coat pocket. I never had a reason to. Now, has he got a reason? If so, what is the reason? I very much doubt that he has. But not alone was he carrying this deadly weapon on his person. As you can see from the photograph, he was able to brandish it without a moment's pause. He had it out there and was ready to go in the blink of an eye. So what kind of person does this? And what kind of culture might they have come from? These are questions we want answered. And lastly, has he been arrested? Has this person been arrested? Are they in custody? Have they been questioned? Have they been charged? Because if you come at someone with a weapon like this, as far as I'm concerned, especially if it's kids. And remember, we had the vicious stabbing, uh, not only of the Catholic priest in Galway. We've had numerous other stabbings almost every second day here in Ireland now. But don't forget the three little girls that were viciously stabbed in Parnell Street late last year. So this is becoming all too common in a country where it never was common before. And there seems to be one little main thread running through all these incidents and you and I both know what that thread is. Of course state broadcaster RTE, that is the state's propaganda mouthpiece, was quick to issue a statement saying Gardaí have appealed to the public to verify information on social media and messaging apps following an incident at a school in Dublin. Numerous far-right accounts have spread misinformation about the incident over the past two days, saying it involved an adult migrant with a knife. In a statement, Gardy said all those involved in this incident are school students and Irish nationals. Now, the more discerning among you will immediately spot the issue here. It tells us absolutely nothing, and purposely so. The fact that he was a student means absolutely nothing. If, for example, he was an Afghan migrant, and I'm not saying that he is, and he had come to Ireland in his mid-30s, but said he was 16 and had been taken as 16, he would be put in a school and therefore would be a student of that school. Now, I'm not saying that's this case, but saying someone is a student tells you nothing. They could be 36 years old and a student with the way the current immigration debacle is working. Secondly, saying that all involved were Irish nationals, again, means absolutely nothing. The Department of Foreign Affairs are issuing Irish passports and Irish nationality like smarties. They're minting brand new Irish nationals who may be from any part of the globe at such a rate and on such a scale that they now notify them of their new nationality by email. Yes, it's happening that fast and on such a scale that they just bang out emails. Job done. So saying everybody in the incident was Irish nationals again means absolutely nothing in today's Ireland. It used to mean something, today it means nothing. And as for RTE lecturing us plebs about far-right disinformation and misinformation, well, here's RTE on a different day. <laughs> a phrase to do with pot and kettle quickly springs to mind. So what are ordinary Irish people saying? about this incident online. Well, Ashley O'Connell says all involved are juveniles. Why are the Gardaí trying to downplay it? If that was an Irish young fella stabbing migrant children, it would be front page. Sure, anyone can be Irish national now. They're handing out passports like confetti. It means absolutely nothing. Zero value now. 
says Ashling O'Connell. Smedley Butler, not sure if that's his real name, says, So everybody, it was actually a teenager who just looked like an adult and looked to be from the Middle East, but is an Irish national. He was brandishing that big ass knife in the schoolboy scrap you saw. I feel so much better now. Thank God for that. I seem to detect a slight hint of sarcasm there, Smedley, but uh, I could be wrong. Eamon Ryan, parody, says, Saw a post that said the foreigner with the big knife attacking the kids was wearing Adidas trainers. Checked the video and verified that he wasn't wearing Adidas. They were Nike. Always check. Yes. Eamon Ryan parody. I'm not sure if that advances the uh, story very much, but uh, thank you for your comment. Adrian Crowley says, There's feckin' videos of what happened. What more do the Gardaí need? RTE News, you are feckin' disgraceful. News media me whole. I get the distinct impression Aiden is clearly not impressed with the mainstream media. So the issue here is a much wider problem. People have lost confidence in the government's ability to control who is here and who isn't. There was a time, a very few short years ago, where everybody was someone's son or daughter. Everybody had a place. Everybody could be tracked and could be found in a moment's notice. It was easy as that. Now, with open borders, we have people flooding in from all over the world, many with no documentation or false documentation and the authorities have no real way or probably no real interest in verifying all of these details. It leaves the public adrift. It leaves the public scared. It leaves the public nervous because suddenly you don't know who's in your neighborhood. You don't know who's on your streets. You don't know who's in class with your child. You don't even know is a person or persons in a classroom with your child actually adults? Are they way older than the children there? This was never a problem before, never even a consideration before. It just wasn't a thing. But now it is, and parents are scared and they're worried. And every time something blows up that's a bit out of shape, the reaction from the state, from the authorities, is to clamp down, make it go away, Don't report it. Anybody who talks about it, ban them. Get them the hell out of there. That only fuels the fire. That isn't far right. That isn't conspiracy theory because we have mechanisms now that we never had before. We don't need to rely on RTE or the Irish Times or the local newspaper. We have X. We can all see it. Everybody's got a phone. Anything that happens, no matter how mundane, is filmed. Somebody switches on their phone camera and it's all there. We can see it with our own eyes. We can hear the screams. We can hear the shouts, the chants, the words, the threats, the cries. And that's why they're desperate to shut down social media. Because it means that it's difficult for them to lie to us. Not that they don't lie anyway, but it's now difficult to lie. They want channels like mine and many others deleted as if that was going to fix the problem. When the safety of school children is a secondary concern to the niceties of not offending people who have arrived or come to our country from other places and other cultures. When that's secondary, then all is lost. The nation is gone. The country is gone. That's not a country I want to live in. That's not a country at all.